And I want to talk about our friends over at da -dun -da -da, Draft Kings. You know, America's top rated sports booking app. Not only are they safe, but they are secure. And just like my main man, Deke, they're reliable, baby. Oh, wow. Thanks. Come on, man. You know you're reliable. Give me some. There it is. And for all the first time people out there, because we got plenty of first time people out there, right? Oh, it was my first time doing this. It was my first time saying that. Well, when it's your first time signing up for Draft Kings, make sure you use the promo code MOATS. M-O-A-T-S, so you can receive up to $1,000 in deposit bonus money. Deke, it's just free money, buddy. Oh, yeah. That's all it is. You you put some money in. I'm Mr. DraftKings over here. You typed in that promo code, Motes, and I said, I'm going to match you. It's that simple, ladies and gentlemen. It is that simple. But the one thing that we do know, Deke, is that sometimes people have problems when it comes to gambling. Sometimes they lack self-control. Sometimes they might have a crisis. Sometimes they need referral services. And you know what I tell them? If you got a gambling problem, crisis counseling, or you need referral services, you better call 1-800-GAMBLER. I said 1-800-GAMBLER. Steelers fifth round draft pick out of the University of Wisconsin. Mr. Isaiah Loudermilk, man. First off, welcome to the Steelers family, man. I'm loving what I'm seeing from your on tape, but just talk about how have you been adjusting to the NFL life, man? Mm -hmm. um, I feel like I've, I've been adjusting pretty good. Um, you know, it, it definitely is different from college, so it took a little bit kind of kind of start feeling normal. Um, <laughs> I mean, as as normal as it gets here. Hey, but, no, uh, no schoolwork, though, man. You got to love that, right? <laughs> <laughs> that, that is a huge part of it. Um, it was a huge adjustment, um, but in a good way. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll, yeah, I'm done with that. But, uh, I mean, the adjustment's been good so far. And I, I definitely think the guys around here, too, uh, have made it a lot easier, too. Um, you know, um, a lot of them taking me under yeah. their wing, kind of helped me along. So, the adjustment from uh, college to here has kind of been smooth so far for me. I like it, man. And you just had your first career NFL sack this past week, man, versus the Cleveland Browns, <laughs> man. Take, take us through the play, man. I'm a, I'm a <laughs> former pass rush. You know what? Anytime I see a first sack, it's like, yo, this is celebrated. We got to talk about this. So just take us through the play, man. And ultimately, how were you feeling during that whole process of getting that first one? So this one was interesting because I didn't I didn't take anyone to the ground and I didn't even know I got it. Um, <laughs> oh no! I had I had no idea I got it until I got in the locker room and my agent had texted me. Uh, he, he was like, "Congrats on your first career sack." I was thinking I was thinking about the plays I was in. Yeah. I was like, "When when could I have gotten a sack?" And then I realized I had chased Baker out of bounds and I was the closest defender to him, so they gave it to me. But hey. A sack, I mean, it's the first sack, so I'm <laughs> I'm, hey, I'm happy. <laughs> they all count, baby. They, they all do. count. Yes. Let's yes, go. <laughs> now, do you have a yeah. celebration, though, for the next one? Because once you start, man, they say it's like Pringles. You, once you pop, you can't stop. You just keep going. So your next one should be happening this week. So do you got your celebration <laughs> ready? We can't have y'all here just getting sacks and walking off all willy-nilly, okay? See, I've been, I've been trying to think of it. Um... I got a couple up my sleeve that okay. you know, I'm, I, I've been practicing at home, but uh, I had I forget I forget what game it was, but I had got a sack, but we accepted a penalty, so it didn't count. Yeah, um, and we watched it on film, and I had no celebration planned. I just got up, and I had no idea what to do, so that can't happen again. But uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna have one plan. I see you learn it. There we go. Hey, I see you learn can it. Can you give us a sneak <laughs> yeah. preview of uh, the options? Maybe one or two of the options. Um. I, I don't know. I can't give them away. Okay. I don't know which one I'm gonna choose. Yet. I respect it. <laughs> I respect it. Yeah, I'm not sure yet, but we'll see. Now I have a couple questions about your hometown and where you grew up, Howard, Kansas. Like around mm -hmm. six, seven hundred people as the population. I also heard that you did eight on eight football growing up. Was that all the way through high school? Mm hmm. Yeah, so uh so yeah, we got 600 700 people. So it's a tiny uh tiny town, kind of a farming community, but uh yeah, we um didn't have enough players in high school to play, you know, traditional football. So us and then a bunch of teams kind of around that same area, same size towns, um 
decided to move to eight man. So all throughout junior high and high school, I played eight man. The only time I played regular football was uh, was Pee Wee football. But you know, junior high and high school was strictly eight man football. That's that's pretty much all I knew till I got to college. What's that look like in terms of formation? Like, I've never seen it. Is I've it like three or four geez. linemen then? Yeah. So we got um, there's three linemen. I mean, you can do five linemen, but the outside guys can run routes. So you can either have a good run game or you can put a, a smaller guy or a tight end there in that position. But, yeah, it's pretty much just three linemen, two tight ends, really no wide receivers unless we split somebody out, and then running back, fullback, quarterback. So it's it, it's a, there's a lot of field, so it's a lot of open space. <laughs> Do guys typically make it out of there to go to college? Because I saw you were a three-star recruit. Like, how do people find that? Like, that's not that doesn't sound like a common thing to me. Yeah, I mean, for me, um, I I can't think of anyone else who who I went against or who played eight man. Um, actually, there was one guy. Uh, um, one of my teammates in Wisconsin actually played eight man too in high school, and he made it. But I mean, it it was just kind of, I mean. I made it out, but uh, I just made a highlight tape, sent it to some coaches. They liked it. Just um, out here I was, dogging I was, people out here with three linemen, like <laughs> you're like a killer yeah, out here, man. Yeah. <laughs> was there any yeah, plans but, on anything else outside of football? Um, in terms of uh, like career, push, yeah, yeah. Career. If, if there's not that mm-hmm. big of a pathway coming out of your town to be a college football player, then eventually make it to the pros. Were you thinking about anything else? I saw that you're really into fishing. Yeah, yeah. Um, you know, in high school, I never really thought of anything else. I just knew I was going to take whatever sport it was because I was obsessed with all the sports I played. Um, I mean, I was really, really into basketball um, until my senior year of high school. And then I kind of I put on like 50 pounds in a year. So my uh, my hops weren't there anymore. I wasn't <laughs> jumping. I, I wasn't jumping That's a heck of a growth spurt. My man said 50 in a year. <laughs> yeah. So I. Uh, I couldn't really jump no more, so I lost my <laughs> lost my love for basketball there. But uh, I, I talked to some smaller schools um, kind of early on in my high school career, so I, I knew I would have a place to go, whether that be JUCO, okay. D2, kind of who I started off with. So, I mean, I knew I was going to go somewhere and then figure it out, but luckily uh, calls kind of started flooding in, and uh, I ended up going to Wisconsin. I like it, man. Now, you hinted to uh, earlier – talking about some of the guys you got a chance to learn from here in Pittsburgh. Um, but talk about what's it like having a guy like Cam Hayward? I mean, you're sharing, you know, a defensive room with him. You're in the same position. Just what has that been like for you? How beneficial has he been? Yeah, I mean, I couldn't imagine a better situation for me to grow than uh, than having the guys that we have in the room. Um, I mean, any question I have, um, I'll go to either him or Coach Dunbar mm-hmm. about it, but just kind of some of the things I hear him talk about, some of the things I see him him do, I'll ask him about it. And, uh, you know, he, he, he's he's open with me. He, he's here to help me as much as he can. So, uh, you know, I use him as much as possible. But I I, I can imagine a better tool, uh, a tool for learning than uh, just kind of watching him work. What do you think of the comps to him? There was a lot of people whenever you came out in the draft that were comparing you to uh, Cam Hayward and even seeing some of your play throughout the preseason and through the regular season up to this point. I mean, even your profile pick at one point, it was like, he kind of looks like him too, man. <laughs> yeah, no, I know exactly what pick you're talking about. When I had my big beard. Yeah, <laughs> yes, I, I can see why people kind of thought we looked very similar there. But, uh, you know, um, there, there are things that, you know, I try to take uh, from him from what I see, but you know, I, I also kind of want to carve out my own, my own little story um, and, you know, pretty much just be my own player and kind of take from people here and there. But, you know, I'm just learning as much from him as I, as I can. Besides, man, his head too big. Don't tell him any other compliments, man. <laughs> uh, he don't need no more positivity around him, okay? He get enough attention. <laughs> yeah, he get enough attention. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> man, but... um. Take us back, man, a little bit. We want to talk about your draft story here, man. Going 156 overall, fifth round. Did you know when you were getting picked? Man, did you have a party? Like, what what was that whole thing like for you, man? Yeah, so um, I had no idea I was getting picked. No clue. Um, I wasn't at my party yet. We were getting ready to go to my party. Um, (laughs) So when I got the call, uh, we were kind of getting ready. 
um, me and my whole family, we were going to go to this little piece of joint in town uh, and kind of celebrate together because I was thinking late rounds and, yeah. and so forth. So we were getting ready for that. And uh, I got the call and I didn't really think it was going to be a team because it seemed pretty early for me, but uh, it happened to be Coach Tomlin. And, uh, you know, when I got that call, I just couldn't, I couldn't believe it. Um, I mean, I, I, I was just overwhelmed. And then uh, after I hung up with him, I had to go, go find my family. My mom was out cleaning the car, getting oh, ready man. to uh, get, yeah, we were getting ready to leave. So she was out cleaning the car. Um, people were just scattered all over the place. But I, I mean, it, it was an incredible day for me. I like that right there, man. That's clean. A little surprise action. Shout mm-hmm. out to the surprise, oh, yeah. man. <laughs> Huge surprise for me. <laughs> man. And just speaking of surprises, right, since you've transitioned to the NFL, man, what do you think has been the biggest surprise to you as a professional athlete? Um, I mean, I wouldn't say anything has surprised me so far. Um, I kind of had certain expectations coming in and pretty much everything has lived up to it. But I'd say one of the one of the biggest things really is the competition level. Um, You know, every single one of these players out here um, belong here. I mean, the NFL caliber players. So the level of competition when I got here definitely ramped up. And it it took me a little bit to see that. It took me a little bit to get um, comfortable with that. But I would say that's one of the biggest things that I had to adjust to was just, uh, you know, kind of going against these these giant fast (laughs) alignment. Now, I mentioned that you like fishing earlier. Do you have a, a prize catch, biggest catch, or best story you like to tell? Um, I haven't really got – I haven't really caught many big fish. I caught um, I caught a big catfish here, actually. Um, this was a surprise to me because I was using uh, – I was just on one of these rivers. I'm still trying to figure out all the names <laughs> of the rivers. <laughs> He's just out here. Let's get it. <laughs> so, Yeah. <laughs> You just go solo? He said, yo, I'm just out here. I'm just going this river, whichever one, Monagalela. Yeah. Who knows? Um, <laughs> it was one of the one of the big ones, but uh, I was just fishing for bass, and I ended up catching a giant catfish. So, I mean, that's pretty much the only – that's the only fish I've caught here. But mainly back home, just like small crappies and small bass and stuff like that. Nothing big yet, but hopefully it comes. Okay. Now, I'm seeing this question pop up a lot in the chat. They're wondering why you picked number 92 for the Steelers. Um, uh, well, in college, I was 97, and, you know, we got Cam. Um, Man, you so, could have took that number from Cam. Come on, bro. Your pocket's no, deep. <laughs> you know <what? laughs> no, but um, I had asked them. They asked me what I wanted, and I asked what numbers uh, in the 90s they had left in 92 – was the final number they had left. So, I, I mean, I just took that one. I can respect Good that. Good one right? to take. Got some history here. All right, all right. James Harrison. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hopefully that number proves, uh, gives you those same type of results and success as well, man. So, yeah, yeah, I'm with yeah. I like the number, I man. I hope so. Yes, Ain't that the yes. truth, man. Now, going back to you coming out of this high school, man, eight on eight football and things like that. Talk about the recruiting process in terms of how did you end up at Wisconsin? Mm-hmm. So my recruitment, it started pretty late. Um, you know, my uh, part of my junior year is when I really started taking football seriously. Um, and then I had made a highlight film while I was sitting in class for fun. Um, I mean, I just really didn't have anything just to do. You by uh, yourself just did it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, so man. we had this little app or whatever on our, uh, on our laptop. So I got on there and just threw some clips together, just kind of having fun. And then uh, my coach got a hold of it and he started sending it out to everybody. And then I got one offer from, uh, who was the first one? I I can't even remember. Um, Wyoming. I got my first one from them. Let's go (laughs) UW. Yeah. I got one from them just randomly. And then after that, it was like day by day, uh, coaches started calling me more. And it was just because, just because of that film that I had put together. And then my coach got a hold of it. He didn't even tell me he was sending it out either. But, you know, I'm, I'm definitely grateful he, he did that for me. But, um, you know, I went through the, the whole process. And Wisconsin was really big um, on my head pretty much the whole time. I had never heard of them before or anything like that. But I, I uh, took my visit and just absolutely, absolutely fell in love with Madison. So, I mean, it was an easy choice for me. 
Let's go, then. Let's go. Shout out to to the Badgers, then. Now we did. Oh, have, oh, go ahead. I don't know. Oh no, no. I was saying. Um. So we did have a couple questions coming in from the chat, man, because they are actually loving with you hearing, or they're loving hearing from you. But they had a couple questions. Um. This first one is from a guy, Charlie Doyle. He says, "Uh, were you better than <laughs> T.J. Watt at Wisconsin?" <laughs> <laughs> you guys can watch the uh, watch the film. <laughs> Let's TJ, was, go. TJ, TJ was a monster at Wisconsin, <laughs> <laughs> and he is a monster here. So, uh, so I mean, you guys can watch that. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And now, yeah. Another one we had come in uh, was from a guy named Diaris. He says, uh, "Just talk about the best thing that you've learned from Cam so far." The best thing. Um, I'd say the biggest thing, and it, it's, it's what he talks about all the time, is hand usage. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I got here, and I mean, I, I knew how to use my hands. Um, you know, being as tall as I am, that that's one of my advantages, and I definitely try to take advantage of it in college, but um, just kind of seeing how Cam goes about it, seeing how he gets his hands inside, um, I feel like has helped me a lot. So he's he's always preaching inside hands, you know, get them off of you. And yeah. um, that's definitely one of the biggest things that he's drilled into me since I got here. Now, he's a fundamentalist, man, a technician as well, man. Love to <laughs> see that. That's my dog right there. Love his game, man. And yes. when you watch you on tape, though, you I mean, the similarities are there for a reason. You look at your hand, you, you look at your pad level, both of you guys being big guys, but you can just see. That 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 focus on that part in terms of your hands, man. So definitely keep that going, baby. Yes, indeed. Oh okay. yeah. Now we had a couple more questions, man, from the uh, from the chat, man. That we're going to ask you real quick. Um, this one's from a guy named Ali. He says, "Uh, just talk about what's it been like for you playing under Coach T." Um, Coach T has been incredible. Um, I mean, he's a great man, great coach. Um, and you know, when I first got here, kind of seeing how he goes about. Uh, his day, um, you know, he, he truly attacks every day. And, uh, and I mean, he gets the most out of it uh, himself and he gets the most out of it from us. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm extremely happy to, to have him as a coach and he's definitely been helping me along too. Nah, absolutely, man. That's a, that's a legit leader of men right there, man. You got a good one. You definitely have a good <laughs> one, baby. Yeah. All right, now the final one that we have for you, man, before we let you get up out of here and get back to your preparation and stuff for the big game, it's from Todd. He says, do you have an actual nickname? Because clearly everybody calls you all type of stuff, right? <laughs> the Milkman, <laughs> Loud Pack, Loud and Milk. Like, we, we don't really know what to call you. Do you have a name? And, and is it self-given? <laughs> I, yeah. So, oh, no. no. <laughs> huh? <laughs> so, d- did you give yourself this nickname or was it given to you? Um... Which nickname are you talking about? Whichever nickname you go by. So I, I mean, I've been called everything. Uh, a couple guys around here call me Buttermilk. Um, Buttermilk. <laughs> I have no idea. But my nickname in uh, in college was Squatch, uh, short for Sasquatch. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> yeah, wow. I mean, just because just because of my size. Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> there were a few pictures of me. Um, some of my celebrations. I'm kind of walking off, and it. it I mean, frame by frame, like with a so-called Sasquatch, it looks pretty similar. Um, oh, okay. But that's what I, they call me in college. But now they just call me milk, buttermilk, 2% whole, <laughs> whatever they're feeling that day. <laughs> hey, hey, almond milk, whatever. Any So any milk analogy or in the milk body yes. work, then we, we're good. Okay. Do you yeah, have a preference? Sometimes it, depends. sometimes it depends on how I'm playing. If I'm playing good, they'll move me up to like whole milk. Oh, oh okay, okay. <laughs> If I have a bad play, I'm buttermilk. Oh, so. man. <laughs> that boy, he looking a little skin. That's skin milk right there. He got reached on that, man. Nah. <laughs> oh, yeah. 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 That's when I get up off the ground. Skin oh, milk. man. You have a preference on any of those, though? Did you like Squatch in college? Do you like any of these milk ones? Um, You know, I I don't really have a preference. Um, I mean, people can call me whatever they want to call me, and I, I'm going to answer. So, <laughs> I mean, I, I have no preference. <laughs> Well, hey, man, we can respect it then. I like it right yeah. there. But Isaiah, man, we definitely appreciate you taking some time, man, to hop on the, uh, the podcast <laughs> with us, man. We definitely appreciate you. And just keep being great, man. We, we're big fans of you, man. So keep doing what you're doing, man. Oh, yeah. Yes, no sir. doubt. I appreciate it, bro. appreciate you guys having me. Oh, no doubt.